we're back again. <laughs> Another day of house hunting. We've got in four horrible rainy weather. Right. We're going to look at north. 10 houses with Marvin Farron right now. And you're coming on this ride with me right after this. My name's Ken Dunn. I'm a real estate investor, developer, and a national housing advocate. For decades now, thousands and thousands of Canadian families have been stuck in situations that they don't want. They want to own homes. They want a place to call their own and raise their families. And they're struggling trying to put the money together for a down payment. They're struggling trying to keep their credit in good standing, paying for rent, being moved around, and never feeling settled down. Real estate investors have been using strategies for decades where they buy houses with other people's money, they borrow the money to increase the value, and they sell the houses making incredible profits. I'm going to show these Canadian families how to use the same techniques to buy their dream homes. They're not going to need down payments. They're not going to need credit because they're going to buy a house with sweat equity. All right, welcome back to the show. I told you guys right up front that this wasn't going to be just me sitting in a studio. Uh, we're on the road already. We're on day two of house hunting. And there's a couple things I want to share with you right now. If you're really serious about doing this, you got to get out there and look at houses. Like all the information that I'm sharing with you on the show and the stuff we talk about in the studio, it, it's kind of to help your mind understand. You got to go out and find an undervalued property. You got to go find a place that you can get lift in. But I've told this to thousands of real estate investors and I'm gonna tell this to you guys too. You're not going to do that staring at a computer screen. If you wanna find the right house to use this strategy with and get the full lift, you gotta go out. And it's not gonna be unusual for you to look at 20 or 30 houses. We've already looked at 25 houses before today. So after this day, I'm praying we find something by the way too. I don't wanna be spending all this time doing this, but it's what it takes. You think about what we're doing for the Farron family. We're gonna end up finding a house that we can buy for somewhere around 500 grand. We're gonna put 100 grand into it. It's gonna be worth 800 grand. They're gonna get $200,000 in equity. That's cash that they get to have for the rest of their lives and they can sell that place later and go into another place and do all this amazing stuff. If you're not willing to actually dig into this and do the work, it's just not gonna work for you. So when we're out there today, we wanna keep in mind the things that they need for their family. And when you're doing this, always keep in mind your kids and your wife, your husband, your spouse, absolutely crucial. So we wanna make sure that we're close to schools and close to infrastructure and all that stuff. But we also are looking for things like a little bit of a backyard that can be fenced in. They've got young kids. We definitely need something that has the potential to increase the value of it. I'm, a, you know, what, where I've seen the best increases in values, if you guys are doing this, is unfinished basements. It's freaking amazing because in an unfinished basement, it's easy to put in a bathroom. It's easy to put in another bedroom. I mean, there's just so much you can do with them. And that finished space radically increases the value. So I'm gonna, I'm really hoping we can find something with an unfinished basement as well. It'll make all the difference in the world. As we're pulling up to the property here, I was just uh, looking around and I'm just gonna show you guys what it looks like outside. You wanna take a look in the neighborhoods as you're like, be aware when you're out looking at houses, don't just you know stare down the road as you're driving. When you get into the neighborhoods, start looking at the sizes of the other house. What I like, what I'm seeing right now we're getting into the neighborhood of the first place we're looking at. And what I'm noticing is they're all nicer size houses. They're bigger lots. And there's a chance we could go into like a smaller, tighter area. But all of this stuff on the outlying area, this all makes a difference in resale and valuation. Because it tells me that the comparables the agents are going to be looking for later and seeing, they're going to be close by. They're going to be nice houses. And when I see development like this place going on here, that means this area is really desirable to be looking in. So as you're looking at properties and you're out doing this, you wanna be aware of everything that's happening around you as you're looking at the properties, because those are the indicators that it's, it's a great investment. Like even if you're doing this for your primary residence, you gotta think like an investor. It would, look, it would make it a really great investment because of all the other things going on around it, the size of the properties, the pride of ownership, the cut grass, like all that stuff makes a difference. Introducing the ultimate in hydrotherapy and premium relaxation. 
experience the epitome of artisanship with Canadian hot tubs. Meticulously handcrafted for over four decades, Canadian hot tubs are synonymous with comfort, depth, and unwavering durability. You can choose from our range of four foot cedar tubs or indulge in the therapeutic embrace of our five foot hydrotherapy models. Available in Canada and across the world, Canadian hot tubs bring a touch of luxury to homes worldwide. Craftsmanship that speaks for itself. Visit canhottub.com now. All right. Okay, little little teaching point for you, understanding. I don't know if you noticed when we were driving down here, but there's houses that are being ripped down and like bigger houses being built on this street. And if you take a look down here, like just generally speaking, everything looks like it's well kept. Like you see all the owners are cutting the grass, except for this one's for sale. But even this one that we're looking at, it looks like it's in great shape. So it might not even fit what we're looking for, but this is the type of stuff when you're looking at this, because remember, everything is about how much we can increase the value to make it the best situation for you. Yeah. But I, that's, I like this street, you know, yeah. for a house on it. And it's, it's more so because of the overall feel of what I'm feeling, like the grass is cut, you know, there's pride. What, what that means is pride of ownership. Like people are really excited about what they're seeing and seems pretty good. Yeah. Now for your first home, we're not going to find the dream home, right? Yes. <laughs> this isn't going to be your dream home. You know, that might be the next one or the one after that. But you want to start looking like when we see something that we can see the lift in for sure, yes. and it could work, mm -hmm. then we need to start looking at like, where are the schools? You know, what what's the infrastructure like? Yeah. This would be good for your mom get or your wife getting to work in Whitby because the bus that comes along here turns left and goes right to Whitby. Okay, yeah, that's good. You know, so stuff like that. And this this is a big house. You can see it's got a full basement and everything. It's got a big driveway. So even when you buy a second car, look at the backyard. This is a freaking amazing backyard. It comes all the way back to here. This is all this. So we'd put a fence in here, like right across, make it private for you. Put a bigger, a bigger fence along that side so the whole area is private back here. Put a nice deck on the back, barbecue. Just everything's beautiful about it. I love it. So even as I'm looking at it now, it looks like the roof, the, the shingles on the roof are good. So it looks like it's been newer. The uh, windows are older. We could even build a garage here and increase the value. Oh, it smells old. This is awesome. Wow. Oh, what are the comparables like here? 650 though. This is just old. This is perfect. Like for what we want to do. Yeah. We'll need new windows in here. This is really cool. If we can save this, this is like really nice accent stuff. The kitchen, like we'd rip out the flooring, new kitchen. This kitchen would be 10 grand. You could put a bedroom back here. Like this whole area could be a really nice sized bedroom. And we could put a, a washroom so, the, so all the plumbing is over above here. So if you come over here with me yeah, for a sec. Yes. Come on over here, Marvin. So it's, it's again, it's this, this is probably rented. You pay like 20 bucks a month. You have to take over the, that's pretty normal. But this is all centrally located. The bathroom upstairs. So all this piping is where things are. So this is the bathroom upstairs here that's coming in here. And then you've got this space here that it's not tall though. My only my only concern is the height of it. But it would it would be really freaking easy to to put a full bathroom down here. These fuses, remember I was telling you about the fuses before, which is good. So this is a family that's owned this forever. But this is big enough down here that what I might actually consider doing is making it a big bedroom. So imagine if you had and this stuff here can come out. Let me just see. You probably have more room above this. This is a false ceiling. What's neat about a place like this is you could actually create a really freaking nice bedroom down here that had a bathroom on it. And then this could be a kid's area or a family room. 
So that you come into this room and there's a TV here and a nice couch and then the door to the bedroom is right here and then this is just one big bedroom with nice closets, you know, full size. And you've got two windows there that, they're not great windows, but, but it's still, you could put a, be a bedroom down here without any issue. But what's beautiful is this would all be gone. It would be nice white walls, hardwood floors, finished ceiling, It'd be freaking amazing. And with the side entrance, Resale well, the side entrance and we, and we can get a garage out there. So we would build a garage on the property. <laughs> so if you think about like the other thing you could do, which would really help the value here. I don't know if you're going to get a, a, a full garage here, yes. but you could easily put a roof over the top of it and have some posts here that at least it's a carport. So it's covered over okay, yeah. and that would increase the value as well. It would do a lot to change the value of what you got here. And you got a nice little deck. Again, in the neighborhood, it's that pride of ownership. You know, there's other places, but this is another place that if you wanted it, you know, they're, it's listed, but they're doing something called holding for offers, which means that they want everybody to look at it and they know it's going to sell fast. And I know it's going to sell fast too, because of the potential of it. So we got time to go look at some more properties, but if this is one you think would work for you guys, we probably should try and get it today. Today? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Take some, go back through it, take a bunch of pictures for Renee. All right, let me do it. Of all the rooms and everything else. Um, offers, if any, October 20th. Five two zero p.m. Thank you. 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 Okay, so Ken, what do you think? No, I think this would work good. Uh, Marvin's excited about it. Um, are you Marvin? Are you excited about this? Yeah. I'll tell you what's really great about this, and this is like the perfect example of the type of place that we need to find. And, and for anybody that's in the sweat equity program, this is a perfect property that you want to find for yourself where you can see really amazing bones. I love the hardwood floors. I love the baseboards. So you know, this was like a really nice house back in the day, yes. right? That was yes. amazing. But then as you guys saw earlier, when we were looking around, the kitchen is classic 1950. It has like 1950s appliances in it. And so there's really not been anything done. And then in the basement, it, it's perfect. You just rip that all out, yeah. redo it, increase the value. And I think if we put a carport on the side. No, that's a great idea. In addition to entrance, yeah. No, that will definitely look. Yeah. yeah. And then fix up the backyard. If we can get this for what they're asking, 500, 520, 550, we could easily turn this into 700, 750, and it would be a winner. Let's just hope Marvin likes it. That's, that's the big thing is I like it, but it's not my house. All right, so this is the perfect place to do what I'm talking about. So everybody that's paying attention to what we're doing, this this house couldn't be any better. Let me explain what I mean by that. It's classic 1970s vintage. Nothing's been done inside. It wouldn't surprise me if it was part of an estate sale. But when I look at the property overall, I see comparables for houses just like this without a garage that are selling for 600 and 600, 700,000 completely redone. This one is listed for 525. But here's the other part. When I looked at the other houses that weren't, that have sold at 650, they didn't do some things that absolutely should have been done. So one of the things we're absolutely gonna do here is we're gonna build a carport on the side and close in the walls. That'll drive up the value. We're gonna put a fence across. Come look at this big backyard here. It's freaking unbelievable. So we look at this big backyard. We're gonna put better quality fencing right along the side and the back, and now we have an oasis back here. And then in the basement of that house, we're gonna create another bedroom, another bathroom, and a TV room. I don't know what else we're gonna to see today, but if we land this property, we're set. If you live in this amazing country and you dream about having a house for your family, a home you can call your own, but you haven't been able to do that because you have a hard time building up a down payment or the banks are telling you they can't help you because of credit, then pay attention. This ad is for you. My name is Ken Dunn, and I'm a real estate investor and a national housing advocate. I have to tell you, there's a housing crisis going on right now, but the governments aren't going to fix it for you. All the governments are worried about is building more apartments, building more rental units. But until we figure out a way to help Canadians right across this country to buy homes with no money, then the crisis is never going to end. But don't worry, I've got the solution. 
I've been investing in real estate projects for more than 30 years, and I've never used any of my own money to buy the real estate. Here's what happens. I find a place that I want to buy. I look for places that are cheaper than the market. So they're the below value, and I buy the, the properties with private money, 100%. And then I renovate the properties, increase the value. Then I go to the bank and say, hey, I own this house that's worth 800,000 and I only need a mortgage for 600,000 and they give me the mortgages. And you know what the dirty little secret the banks won't tell you is? If you have equity in the property, they're not gonna ask to see your credit. They're not gonna ask about your loans. They don't ask about any of that stuff. I wanna show you how to do this. I've helped hundreds of Canadian families just like you to buy homes without a down payment. And in this live workshop, I'm going to show you how to go out and find an undervalue house in your community that would make the right home for your family. And it's a fixer upper. Then I'm going to show you how to buy that property without using any money. You use private investors funds and I'll show you how to get them. Then I'm going to show you how to renovate the property using other people's money. And then once it's done, you're going to own a house that's got hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity in it, and you can easily get a bank loan and live happily ever after. It's called buying a house with sweat equity. And if you click on the link, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. That's right. Well, that's right. But, but think about when we first talked and, and we've gone over your numbers a lot of times, right? So you've got significant income coming in and you're paying 2,600 bucks uh, a month right now for your rent, but there's another $4,000 there, right? So that's 6,600 and this is going to cost you about 4,000 a month afterwards, but it's, it's your mortgage, right? Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Uh, they're scared. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. We've looked at 18 houses and we found the one. I think there's significant opportunity with this house. It was the place we looked at today, the one I was telling you guys about. Uh, they really love it. Marvin was it's super excited about it, but they're looking at the numbers. I think this is the first time they're looking at the numbers through real eyes and it's it's like it's a big payment, but they can afford it. It's just scaring them. And so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. So I, I guess a, a piece of advice for you before we go, it's going to feel really weird doing this. It's going to feel uncomfortable because you've never had a mortgage before. Um, and the numbers like the, it's going to scare you. It's going to, but I want you to do the numbers over and over again. And every time you do them, you're going to see it's the same situation. And it's an improvement in your life. Anytime you get a chance to grow in your life and become better and do more, it's going to scare you. Embrace that feeling. I, I am deflated right now. Um, I feel for them so much. Uh, and I don't have much more for you right now. Hey, come back next week to find out if we're still doing this or not.